So, good afternoon. Sounds awesome. Cool. So I got from this training stuff, just so you're aware, I figured out why it was taking so long. It literally took about 16 hours to download the video. And I'm like, oh, because the internet is not super high speed here. So I have to update the internet. Um, so I finally... It's not dial-up, it's just basic speed, because I was, well, I still have Fios, but I had, like, level 2 Fios at my old place. This place has level 1, so, because <laughs> I was like, why is it taking 16 hours to download the videos that usually take an hour, hour and a half, you know? So, so yeah, it was fine, I, I did that yesterday, it was finally done by this morning, so I got through half of the video, so I, I'm, I have half of the PowerPoint <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if if you want to help me, like, you know, jump in here and we can stretch it out. <laughs> yeah, it's good content. I'm just like, ah, I only have half. <laughs> So cool. Okay, well, let's get started for today. Today we're going to be talking about live events, whether in person or, you know, on the phone, webinars, all that aspect, but why live events are so important. Um, not only does it help build your relationship with either prospects, clients, things like that, it also builds your presence and credibility as well. So before we jump into it about you, think about your mentors and the people that you uh, learn from because all of us have to be having mentors because we always want to surround ourselves with people that are getting the results that we want so we can ever better ourselves. So think about who you listen to and also kind of keeping in mind with that, one of my mentors really emphasizes on the fact of who you listen to. Be careful that you're not listening to somebody that, you know, talks a bunch of stuff, but they're not actually practicing what they preach, uh, which leads to the next thing. Do they actually lead you by example? Um, and in that regards, live events are a perfect way to convey to, you know, your prospects, business clients, all of that, that you actually practice what you preach. Um, you know, the big thing is somebody who had, you know, they made millions of dollars 20 years ago, and then they've been teaching those strategies for the past 20 years and making money on that. Chances are the way that they made the money 20 years ago has changed. So they're preaching you a dream, but they're living a nightmare. So if you try to, uh, you know, <laughs> replicate what they did 20 years ago, you're not going to be getting the same results. So really keep in mind about how, who you listen to and do they lead by example. So once you find those mentors, how do you connect with them best? Um, I know, you know, a lot of them use emails, blogs, things like that, which is a great way to learn content from them. But I feel like you act my relationship with my mentors, um, you know, go the farthest when I actually connect with them live, either, like I said, in person, seeing them on a webinar, you know, people have phone hangouts, all sorts of different ways to just have a conversation with them, whether, you know, we're having a one-on-one -on -one conversation or it's a webinar and they're just talking to the group and I'm attending, that still helps to build a relationship. And there's just something that you get from a face-to-face -face that you don't get from reading an email per se. So kind of Bye. 
Uh, I definitely like the face-to-face -face aspect of meetup groups. Those work really well, so you're actually meeting people and building a relationship in person, um, which is where I found a lot of great mentors. Uh, also, I find um, like the webinar aspect, you, know, you mentioned Hangouts, but any kind of thing like that, videos, um, and just being a fan of them on Facebook. Um, I know one of my uh, real estate mentors uh, who I went through his classes, he has a Facebook group he's active in and just seeing him comment and f give feedback in there shows me that he's active and what he's, he's aware of, uh, you know, what we're doing and it's just kind of that, you know, support system out there that, you know, if I had a question, I know that he's quick to answer other people's questions, so he would be quick to answer mine as well. Oh, yeah, I, I was just waiting for you on there. <laughs> you there? Okay, yeah, anyway, so that's that's one example. Um, you know, phone conversations, just anything when you're actively having um, that. And then social proof is a big one. Um, that's where you see on Facebook. It's kind of, there's a fine line. You know, the poor people and the middle class, they don't like the numbers shown. However, once you're kind of in this group, you see people will show, hey, guess what? I just made X amount. You know, you see real estate deals. Oh, you know, here's a check for $10,000 and stuff. That's a great aspect of social proof. If people aren't able to show you checks that they're receiving with dates on them, I know uh, some, <laughs> what you call, furus. <laughs> uh, I know some of those uh, personally. And yeah, so the, they're all toting and they talk about how they got like a $260,000 check for a deal that they did. And they tote that all the time. But what people don't know is that deal was over 10 years ago. <laughs> so they they mention all the time and reference constantly about that one big check they received but uh, it's not happening nowadays so people that put that social proof even on their Facebook um, that's a great way to verify your mentors Well, I definitely find the once a month is hard. Um, one of uh, it's a great cash flow club that I go to, and they meet once a month, and they have a huge turnout. I think because it's once a month, they usually get somewhere between thirty to fifty some people, which is a great group of people. However, since it's only once a month, I find one there's so many people that you can never make all the contacts that you want, and you're like, oh, I really want to talk to that person. But there's so many, you never get to that. So that's a challenge. Um, and then the other aspect, too, is then since it's since there's so many people and since it's once a month, you have to wait a whole nother month to try to connect with them. Because you can kind of do things, you know, in person. I mean, you can try for an in-person meeting or a phone conversation with people. I mean, it can try best, but everyone's busy. So it works really well to connect with them at the meetup. But those once a month, it gets hard. The once a week are great. You um, don't usually have as many people, so that way you can kind of tone in and really have some great conversations. I know, you know, it gets demanding having to commit once a week because I try to, you know, get to Gil's group on Wednesdays, uh, and then I have my group on Thursdays, and then, you know, there was another one that was trying to do, like, every other Monday, and then I have this other one on Tuesdays, and I'm like, oh, my gosh, that was a little much <laughs> an overload there. So just kind of balancing you know, where your comfort level, where your commitments are, but I would say more frequent, the better. Um, my business meetup that I do every Wednesday morning, that one, that has gone great. Maybe it's just because it's an evening or a morning one versus everything else is in the evening, which gets a little, you know, congested, um, but kind of just those aspects on there.
Yeah, and definitely the consistency is when you'll get known. Um, you know, we, from the beginning of um, my cash flow club, we started a few months ago and we have met every Thursday. There's one guy that has not missed a session yet, which is really cool. And then there's some other regulars that we have that have come, you know, I think they've missed all but one or something. I mean, they've attended all but one. Uh, so it's really cool. So you definitely start building a relationship and then that's where it can double into, you know, future business partners. Cause I've done, um, you know, business with people that I meet at meetups because you get a sense of them and you know, it's a great way to build relationships there. Okay. So why live events? Well, events are also where the leaders are born. So whoever, you know, if you walk in a room like at Gil's Cash Flow Club, everyone looks for Gil. <laughs> so definitely, you know, people are always looking for the hosts. Um, so that's where, you know, you kind of get that relationship with leaders. And also the biggest commitment, somebody that might be on the fence and they haven't met you before and maybe they've been following you online. And then they come to, you know, a workshop that you're holding or a meetup group or jump on a webinar with you suddenly that's really solidifying the relationship and that's where somebody will you know do business with you because they already they kind of feel like they know you and they're kind of aware of you and then they meet you in person and it's like wow okay you know the person that they've been seeing on the webinars oh yeah they're actually real people and uh, those definitely help any feedback on those ones Okay, so how do you go and host your own event? Uh, if you're just getting started, you know, deciding to create a meetup group or something like that might be a little overwhelming. So a great place to get started is, um, you know, we're going to talk a little bit more about Hangouts, but why do you need to get started and actually host your own live event? Well, it's your personal benefit. You're going to become a better speaker. I know just even doing these daily webinars have definitely helped me become a better speaker, and it just helps your conversation keep flowing. You don't mess up as well. Of course, now that I'm saying it, I'll probably mess up a lot, <laughs> but, you know, it's definitely, it helps you and you also get a chance to express yourself and having your events you want. A, it's a platform for you to share your stories, your struggles, your successes, all of that. And that just helps people connect with you and draw in, which we've, you know, we've mentioned that on previous webinars, like on email marketing and building relationships and closing the deal, all of that just to have people connect with you. Well, a live event is a fantastic way to boost that relationship. And then you also are going to get a connection to your own audience. And here's the thing is people are attracted to people. Um, you know, you might have a fantastic business opportunity or something like that. But if somebody doesn't like you, chances are they're not going to do business with you. So in this regards, they're really getting to know you and whether you have success or not. It's really going to be dependent on whether people like you or not. Yeah, no, I agree on that. And then I think, um, yeah, because there's been 
one that's coming to mind, but I want to say that there's been another meetup group where I joined it for this one. I remember it was a mompreneurs one. So I thought that would be really cool. And actually, uh, some of my other friends were going to go and we joined it. And this lady had a live event and she scheduled it and she was kind of back and forth on, you know, and asking here, it's, it's a meetup group, but she wasn't doing a very good job being a host. Um, so this is just kind of an example on why, you know, just run with it, fake it till you make it. So the, the lady here, she had a bunch of people join her new meetup group. And then she emailed us all saying, oh, well, what's a good date or time kind of thing. So there was, you know, weekday weekends. So she asked us for our feedback on that. Okay. So everyone gave it. Then she threw out a couple venues and one venue was like a brunch place and it was going to cost like $50 a head for this fancy brunch thing. Or we could have like a free thing at the lady's office. So everybody kind of voted for the free thing because who wants to spend $50 for a meetup? And then... So everything was all, you know, solidified and good to go. And then what happened that was kind of, you know, crazy is she had a bunch of RSVPs and not a huge amount. I want to say she had maybe 10 to 12 RSVPs, which wasn't bad for her first event. Everything was good to go. And then it was the night before she canceled it saying she didn't have as many um, RSVPs as she wanted. So she canceled it. And it was like, oh, so here, all of this back and forth, planning the event, she had all this feedback, and then she just randomly canceled it the night before. And it was really a letdown, and it also just didn't give me faith in the group. And then I've just, you know, kind of been aware of it, and she's never scheduled another one. So I'm like, well, I can drop out of the group or whatever. But just to keep in mind, so if you're having that event, one, it's the consistency, the showing up, like, you know, I'm going to be, you know, at my cash flow club every single Thursday. And it's the cool thing is I have co-hosts, which we'll kind of go into on the next slide. But if for some reason I can't make it, the show still goes on. There's always something there. You know, when Gil can't make one of these hangouts, you know, one of us can jump on things or I haven't been able to make them and Gil covers. So having that consistency with live events really helps. And here, you know, this lady who scheduled that mompreneur meetup, here, you know, she had the momentum going, everyone was interested, and we're all set to go, and then it just, all the momentum just let out, and so it was really a letdown, and I'm like, well, I don't know if I would even go if she rescheduled it, because she just, you know, she lost her rapport with me. Okay, so kind of going, so those are the benefits of having your own online, uh, just event in general. So we're going to talk about Google Hangouts, which is a free and easy way to get started. Um, we cover this on other topics of how to actually set up a Hangout, so we're not going to go into too much detail, except mention that Hangouts are an excellent way to get started. And look, everybody's using Hangouts, <laughs> so they're definitely a good way to go. <laughs> I don't know, actually. I just Googled because I wanted a good shot of, like, that, and then I happened to see the president, and I'm like, oh, well, that works. Everyone's on Hangouts. <laughs> I know. Love the background, too. <laughs> okay. So how do you get started? Um, so you're like, okay, well... I'll get a Google Hangout, I'll get it going, you'll follow our training videos, we'll walk you through how to get that started. So the idea is to have a Hangout at least one time a week when you get started. So pick a day, a time when it's convenient for you and just make it happen. Guess what? These are recorded, they can be replaced, don't worry about it. If you can only do a 2 a.m. Hangout because that's the only time that you can do it, go for it. If somebody can jump on, cool. If not, guess what? There's replays. At least you have new consistent content. So start with once a week, and then the question is, well, when do I start? Do I need to have, you know, 100 people join my Hangout? Do I have to do all that? No, just start with one. Just if you have, you know, one lead, one connection, one client, just get it going. Um, you know, the, the hardest part is to take that first step. So if you have one lead, jump on it. Get yourself going. And then, and if you have zero leads, guess what? You can still do a hangout by yourself. It works. It records it. And then you have content when you get that one lead. They're going to see, oh, well, they have content every week. I need to go catch up on those. <laughs> and then the biggest thing is you don't even, you know, need to know the specifics. Just get it done. And then this is where it can kind of tie in that you can actually get together with other newbies. And if you're not sure what to do, that's where, you know, we're talking about co-hosts. You know, Gil and I co-do this webinar. I have a co-host um, for my cash flow clubs. So it's three of us. So that way, you know, 
we're all leaders in it, but if somebody's busy or not, the show still goes on, which is fantastic. Another thing, um, when I, here I joined one of, uh, meetup group on, for business owners, the first day I just hit it off um, with the organizer of it, and immediately she's like, hey, I love your content, your feedback, you want to be a co-organizer? I'm like, okay. So that's where even if you don't have somebody right the moment to help you out, put it out there and you might just attract an excellent co-host to get it started and you guys can figure it out. You know, you go for strengths and weaknesses. You might know how to, you know, do X and have no clue about Z and at your first hangout, you know, somebody pops on that's an expert on Z and now suddenly you can offer X and Z. Fantastic. Um, so just get it going. <laughs> that's the hardest part is just to start. And what do you share? <laughs> this is a hard one. Okay, yay, I will have a Google Hangout. And then what do I talk about? <laughs> um, so here's a good thing is focus on the mechanics and the strategies behind them. That's exactly what we share on these webinars is, you know, we're not going to, that's why like on this one, I'm not going to teach you right this second on how to do a Google Hangout. Hey, honey, come on. Go away. Go away. Okay, Jonathan. Goodbye. Be careful. Go away. This is live. Goodbye. <laughs> Sorry. Um, kiss. Kids are home all summer, so beware. <laughs> uh, Anywho, so like on this webinar, I'm not teaching you how to do a Google Hangout right now. We're just focusing on content and strategies. And if people need to know how to actually start and set up a Google Hangout, well, there's additional training videos for that. So just teach people, because a lot of the how-to stuff, you can just YouTube or Google, and they can get the information on there. So it maximizes your time. And the thing is, is people really love good content. And, you know, just share whatever it is that you're more knowledgeable about. You're going to be, you know, anybody who's attending this webinar is now more knowledgeable about why to have a live event than anybody who has not been on this webinar, chances <laughs> <laughs> so just share even little tidbits and you know people like when we were talking about video marketing a two-minute video is equal to a blog post so if you can do a two-minute video summarizing what I just talked about hey guess what that's content and people love good content anything to add on there Gil? I think I'm about at the end of the slide Okay, so then here's some just ways, um, quick ways we can go into more detail later, um, but how to get people to your event. So if you're having a Google Hangout or something, you can schedule a Facebook event. Same thing, that, you know, we're not going to go to the mechanics of how to actually schedule a Facebook event right now. Um, but if you have questions, definitely, you know, coaching students, we walk you through all of that good stuff. So schedule a Facebook event, promote it via email uh, if you have a list already. And then other ways to start having it is if you're not even having a hangout yourself right now or you're having it once a week, but your mentors have hangouts. Um, I know one of my mentors, like I mentioned yesterday, had a great hangout and he was in Germany. And, you know, I put it on my Facebook and I said, hey, guys, check it out. Um, so it's just that. So people, if they're liking your content, whether it's you giving the hangouts or if you're telling them to go to one of your mentors hangout, people are associating, oh, guess what? Lauren has good content, whatever she posts. So people are more likely to go to something that I'm promoting, whether it's my own or somebody else's. If I've built that rapport with people and they're liking the information and they're going to these events, then it's a great way to start transitioning when I have my own events and bringing people in that way. Okay, and that'll do it for this section. Good to go.